Hey everybody, I know you thought this day would never happen. I know you thought I abandoned the R2-D2 restoration, but I did not. As a matter of fact, this has been the most difficult and hair-pulling restoration I've ever attempted, and I did not want to get it wrong. After I did the original video, you know that the next step I had to accomplish was getting the dome re-chromed, and that wasn't going to be easy. So the first step that I took uh, many months ago was I went and collected up a number of R2-D2s that were sort of beater figures. They were really bad, you know, bad shape uh, examples. And I sent them to my buddy Ben Elgar, who lives in the UK, uh, which is funny because William sent me the R2-D2 from the UK, and now I'm sending... R2-D2's back, but the reason I did that was because Ben is a very talented action figure customizer, uh, much in the vein of Toy Poloi, and he was going to help me test a number of methods uh, for Chrome, and he did so. He tested, uh, you know, airbrush paint, he tested brush paint, he tested Chrome pens, he tested all kinds of stuff. There was even a leaf process, I believe, that he tested, sort of like a silver leaf, chrome leaf kind of thing. I, I can't recall all the details because it was way too long ago, and I hate to admit that. Um, but in the background, William and I uh, were talking to Ben about the different options. And William said, well, it sounds to me like we should try vac metalizing uh, the dome. And I said, okay, because I told him that's also on the table is to send it to a service and have the service actually vac metalize the dome again. And he said, let's try that. And I said, okay. And so as you saw in the first video, I cleaned the dome and I got all the chrome off of it and cleaned it up and prepped it and got it ready to be sent off to the vac metalizing service. Went off, got vac metalized, came back. When it came back, it was vac metalized and it was durably vac metalized in the sense that it felt like real vac metalizing and not that all clad spray paint like we used on the collar of R5D4, which again, that's why I couldn't use it on a whole dome because it's more of a modeling paint that, you know, sort of creates a chrome look. So I couldn't use that on a dome where the dome was going to be handled quite often um, or potentially often. I looked at it and the dome was vac metalized, but it looked rough. It looked like either the vac metalizing had not had a thick enough coating put on it, if that's even a thing, or that there was a significant amount of cosmetic damage, uh, surface damage on the plastic of the dome uh, that was now magnified by the vac metalizing. And I thought, well, this is the result, it's still silver, chrome, might as well just keep moving forward. And at the time I thought that was gonna be it. You know, I thought this is the result and I'll figure out how to paint the panels. And that's where the headache really came into play for me because I found out through Chris Smith, uh, cause he was very helpful cause he was working on um, the recreations of the lightsaber R2-D2. Uh, I asked him, how are you getting the blue on there? Well, he's going through a manufacturer and he had said, you know, that process involves electroplating. And I was like, well, I don't have that option. So then I did the interview with Kevin Sexton, a uh, toy smuggler. Uh, if you haven't seen his YouTube channel, go check it out. And uh, he told me um, that he uses a, a pen. Um, it's by Umark and it's called Dr. Paint and he uses their metallic blue paint pen. He said it's an oil-based paint and he takes the pen and he releases the paint into a, a palette and then he uses like a toothpick to carefully move the oil paint into the grooves of the R2 panels, you know, on the top of his head and put them on there um, and let the oil paint settle, you know, and it, it it works out by not creating as many brush strokes or something like that. Um, so I, I went to uh, Hobby Lobby and got this. And then I started the process of doing that. And I tried the toothpick method and it wasn't going well. And I thought, well, I'll get some very, very, very small brushes. Um, 
And so I got some specialized brushes and it was very difficult to paint that dome even with the brushes because the dome was reflective and it was reflecting back at me at, in certain you know lighting scenarios at certain angles. And so you wanna be careful that you don't paint over the edges of each panel. So it was a real nightmare. And I, I basically just turned the camera on me uh, on my hands, turned it on and then ignored it because I had to concentrate so hard to make sure that I was getting these panels right. And even now I don't know how they're gonna turn out. They look like they're gonna turn out pretty well, um, but they're not done yet. I, I'm gonna go back over them at some point with you know an additional coating of, of paint, but they looked pretty good as far as the way the paint was curing. It, it looked pretty promising. The dome on the other hand, I wasn't so sure about. So I was talking to Tony from Analog Toys and I was talking to Toy Poloi. We were in the same conversation and I, I showed them a photograph of the dome just to get their advice. And uh, Toy Poloi said, well, that, that, that's looking a little rough on the chrome. And I said, yeah, I know. I said, it is, it's, it's professionally revac metalized. And he said, oh, he said, well, um, have you tried using uh, the uh, Molito chrome pens? And I said, well, I opted not to do that because I went with the vac metalizing. And he said, well, it's possible because you can go over any remaining chrome like he's done on some of his projects uh, while he's filling in the other areas. And he said, you know, the only thing is you got to let it cure for like a month. And I said, yeah, okay. So um, I said, you think I can go back over it as well? And he was like, yeah, yeah, that shouldn't be an issue. And I was like, hmm. I said in my own head, I was like, well, it'll have factory durable vac metalizing as a base, and then it will have the Molito uh, liquid chrome cured over the top of it, almost like, you know, Hershey's uh, shell uh, chocolate syrup. It'll go over it um, and give an added layer of protection and hopefully give it that pristine, smooth uh, look that the factory R2-D2s had. And so I, finished painting up all the major panels. I left the eye in, in the front for after the chrome cures because I only wanted to do that one time. Um, but I, and, and it, because it was the focal point of, of the droid and had some of that roughness, I wanted to make sure that the, the liquid chrome went over it. The panels themselves that were already painted blue that were small, they, they, they don't exhibit that roughness like the rest of the, the dome does. Um, so I, finished the panels and I put the chrome on there, the, the new layer. And it looks pretty good. I mean, it looks, it's really starting to look factory now. Like it looks like it's supposed to. And that's a huge relief for me because now I've got it in the display case uh, away from dust. I've got it behind glass on a stand. And I'm gonna leave it there for the next three to four weeks and not touch it at all. I'm just gonna let it sit there and cure like Toy Poloi uh, advised me to do. Because he said, once it cures, it's basically like factory chrome, which is exactly what I've been going for. So that's a relief. So in the meantime, the next step in the process is going to be uh, doing the uh, body uh, because the body was yellowed. And so I'm gonna do a Salon 40 peroxide uh, de-yellowing of that. And I'll show you that process in the next video. And don't worry, it won't take six months to get to the next video. This process is going to happen probably next week, uh, or maybe even this weekend, depending on how much time I have. Um, but so what you're going to see in the next video is me doing the leg repair and, uh, de-yellowing the body and the legs of Williams R2-D2. Uh, but I know this has been a very long time in coming for you guys. I know you've been waiting for this, but keep in mind, William has been waiting literally years uh, and that is all on me. But I assure you, it had nothing to do with laziness. It had to do with sheer fear. This has been a real test of my, my hands, like how steady are my hands really? And it's a test of my eyesight. It's been a test of ingenuity. It's been a test of solving problems after you think you've solved the problem. And I want this to look so good. I want this to look 
perfect for William because this is his childhood original R2-D2. And he's been immensely patient. I have to give him all the credit in the world. He has never complained. He's never shown any doubt. He has just rolled with the process as we've gone through it, as Ben and I went through it, and then Tony and, and Toy Poloi and I went through it. I mean, we have gone through this process and brought in so many people. I'm just really hoping that the final result, I mean, because potentially right now, the final result looks like it could be just bang on. Um, but I don't want to count, you know, my chickens before they've hatched. So I'm reserving a little bit of excitement uh, for this next step and seeing what it looks like in a month. Um, I'll be checking it every day through the glass here in the studio. But uh, yeah, so part three will be the de-yellowing of the body and the repair of the legs. And hopefully you'll see that next week. So uh, thanks for watching this, guys. I know this has been a long resto, but it's going to be worth it. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.